What is the worst version of yourself? You know, what are your flaws? I volunteer too much, sometimes I will overeat chocolate and I smile too much at random people. Really? Yes, I'm also too kind. <laughs> okay, sometimes I won't buy a ticket for the bus. If you are unable to know your worst, you will never be able to be your best. And not knowing your worst makes you unauthentic. Noticing and diving deep into our shadow is a challenge that's worth our effort. The worst version of you isn't scary, it just needs attention. But to tap into work with your shadow, it's better if you are in a good mental space. You need to tap into self-security, the open, non-judgmental acceptance of one's weaknesses. How to be the worst version of yourself? Become subject of someone's desire. I recently came across a fascinating article which resonated deeply with me. The author argues that many women, and perhaps men too, often prioritize being wanted by others rather than pursuing their genuine heart's desires. This tendency to seek external validation means that we might not truly know ourselves. Instead, we conform to external standards, particularly beauty standards, and invest our energy into being desired by others. Chosen together. <laughs> the article sheds light on the concept of wanting to be wanted, which means seeking power and worth through our appearance rather than our actions. We might pull in our bellies to appear as someone without digest system or hiding certain aspects of ourselves to be more appealing. The goal becomes to be chosen or desired by someone, and this external validation becomes a central driving force in our lives. While the author acknowledges that seeking validation is natural and it's normal part of being human and being part of society, the concern arises when the desire to be desired becomes the primary motivation for our actions. Instead of investing our energy into creating, engaging fully with life and embracing our true selves, we become consumed by society's desires. In essence, the article encourages us to step away from the cycle of seeking validation through external sources and embrace our authentic selves. But as in this YouTube video, if you want to be the worst version of yourself, want to be wanted by others, try to please all of your friends, family members, people that you don't know. Try to be the perfect partner, the ideal friend and constantly seek external approval. In other words, be a perfectionist. Oh. Speaking about perfectionists, this is another point. I used to be a perfectionist. I really wanted my skin to be super smooth and without acne because it was important to me. Even though I would claim I didn't care about what someone thought about it. But as time passed, I realized that these two ideas don't match up well. I might act like others' opinions about me don't affect me, but deep down, I had a lot of concerns about myself. I aimed for perfection, like having flawless skin, to prove I was without flaws. One big part of being a perfectionist is always being anxious about what other people think of us. In today's world, we often pretend not to care what others think. But deep inside, we, we really want their approval. We try hard to fit in by fixing these things like acne or our bodies. Even though we might say it's for us, we don't do it for others, would we do it if no one else was, was around? Our actions show we actually care about what people think. It's fine to want to look good, but it's important to also accept ourselves as we are and trying to be perfect all the time hurts us. Studies show that perfectionists often feel more stressed, burnout, and anxious. This pursuit of perfection can be detrimental. It can narrow our life to rigid routines and habits, leaving little room for freedom and spontaneity. For perfectionists, there seems to be no freedom at all, just an overwhelming sense of rules and self-criticism for not achieving high performance standards or obtaining a perfect physique. Interestingly, the pursuit of perfect science can paradoxically lead to procrastination. Whether it's in our work, art or any endeavor, the fear of never being good enough can be paralyzing. If you want to be the worst version of yourself, be a perfectionist and nourish it. And remember, don't show too much of your shadow to others. 
as it may wash away your facade. Let ego drive you, the ego, something inherent in all of us, different in size and control, but for some it can get out of control. The ego-driven behavior is particularly visible in Western society, where appearances and possessions hold immense importance. We yearn to outshine others, perpetually comparing ourselves, falling prey to our ego's needs for validation. This leads us to make decisions solely based on ego-driven desires, whether it's buying things just to impress others or starving to have a perfect body. The ego craves these spotlights and tends to overshadow others, emphasizing me over you or we. However, these moments of ego-driven glory are unsatisfying. Even after achieving goals, the ego remains unsatisfied, constantly seeking more proof of its greatness. This egoic mentality also nourishes defensiveness, hindering personal growth and undermining self-esteem. Allowing the ego to run our life exposes us to environments where it remains unchallenged. In such places, everyone affirms our greatness, protecting us from uncomfortable feedback because stepping into unfamiliar territory might expose us to shame and judgment that ego wants to avoid. In such environment, we activate a defensive flight or fight response. Rather than suppressing or battling the ego, the key lies in acknowledging, accepting and working with it. But in the case of this episode, you know, if you want to become the worst version of yourself, be driven by ego. You have full permission, but is this something that you really want? I deeply resonate with everything I've shared. Often I find myself evaluating my physical appearance through the eyes of others, wondering if I'm attractive or desirable. This pursuit of perfectionism drives me to want to be the best version of myself, the most beautiful and captivating individual. Then I make decisions influenced by my ego, seeking validation and protection against any criticism or imperfections but I choose to work with these parts of myself. Because to truly embrace and integrate these aspects, I think we have to confront and acknowledge these parts of ourselves and give them the attention they need. In doing so, we can begin to embrace ourselves fully, accepting both the pleasant and the seemingly unpleasant traits. It's a journey of self-discovery and while I might still grapple with these feelings from time to time, uh, of egoic mind, I'm no longer ruled by them. I can make decisions that align with my true self, not just my ego desires or perfectionist history that I had. And this acceptance has allowed me to grow and evolve into a more authentic, self-aware individual. Now I also can admit that I do care what other pe people think of me, not all people, okay, but some and, and that I'm not perfect, so it's just a reverse energy. The, the, the choice is yours. Be the best and you will be the worst, or be the worst to be the best. I hope the last sentence makes sense, but if it doesn't, I don't care because I'm not perfect. <laughs> See you in the next episode.